Hello everyone. Um, today we're talking about inserting images in Dreamweaver. And there's two ways we're going to do this um, that are super important. One is we are going to insert inline images so that there'll be a line in the HTML code that'll say AMG SRC equals and it'll have a link to the image and that image appears on your page. Um, if you ever noticed, you can click on an image and drag it to your desktop when you're surfing a website. Um, well, that's an inline image. Um, second, we are going to insert background images using CSS. So we will add a background image using one of our selectors, and that background image will appear in that in that same you know header or footer or div or wherever, wherever we want it to appear. Um, but you won't see any reference to that image in the HTML, only in the cascading style sheet. And you would do this because a lot of times you want something in front of an image, like a text or another image. Um, there's not a very easy way to layer inline images, so you can put a background image in via CSS and then have an HTML image or text in front of it. That's not a problem, it's super easy. Um, background images in CSS are the perfect vehicle for that. So I know a lot of you will have advanced designs um, and you'll need to do that technique or use, utilize that technique. Okay, so let's just quickly remind everybody where we were. I, um, I labeled all my layers in Photoshop with extensions. Um, also didn't use any spaces, it's all lowercase. I'm following um, your typical um, naming conventions for web files. So like this one's called water.png for um, one of the things, my ingredient lists, I need water and flower.png. Um, so every one of these um, layers that I wanted to save as an image has the, a suitable extension. Most of mine are PNGs, but you could have JPEGs if you have a photographic image that's a rectangle. Um, and you can have GIF if you have something that you want to be animated um, or something like that. Also, there's several, like I have this pretzel drawing back here that's on one layer, so that will be exported separately. So let me turn off in for a second that other set of pictures. So that pretzel would show up as an image. And then I also have this prep pick, which is all of these items here. Um, so remember, you can take a whole layer set, like that folder, it's called a layer set, and I can give that a title, and it'll export that as a single graphic. So it doesn't matter how many layers are in here, like I have four or five layers in there, they all get exported as a single graphic. Um, so if you ever need to do that, if you have a bunch of adjustment layers that go with something, easiest to put it in a layer set and then give that layer set a name. Also remember, there's all kinds of specialized naming conventions. You can actually export the image at different sizes with different um, compression algorithms, that sort of thing. As many times as I want, I just need to put a comma and then another title. Um, and remember to read that article on the Adobe Help site about all those different naming conventions. That's super important. Okay, so that's all been done. I had gone to the image app generate, um, file generate image assets. You can tell it's turned on, so it's generating any changes I make right now. Maybe I'll turn that off. Um, and then more importantly, okay, so here, if you're falling, if you're, if you're not paying attention, check this out because I've already gone and moved those images into my, this is my sourdough project one. This is my local site folder, my local root folder. All those images are in there. <coughs> um, before I open Dreamweaver, all right. If you've already, if you leave them on your desktop or somewhere that's not your local root folder and you put them into your, your Dreamweaver file in Dreamweaver, um, it should warn you that they're not in your local root folder and it should ask to put it there, at which point you would say yes. But it's just better to be organized so it, Dreamweaver doesn't have to keep reminding you that it's not your local root folder and sometimes it won't. Um, so, you know, you don't want to cause trouble down the line with your links not working and your image is not appearing. So put them in there, your local root folder, then open Dreamweaver. Um, and then also don't rename them after you've placed them onto a page in Dreamweaver, unless you do it within Dreamweaver. Okay, so <clears throat> JavaScript error code, oh no. Okay, so here is my, here's where we ended up last time. 
Um, and always remember, start with files and make sure that's your local root folder. It is. And in fact, I usually start with this close just to make sure I'm dealing with the document I think I'm dealing with, since you're going to have so many documents called index.html for all your different projects. And I do. And then we can even start by previewing it just to remind y'all where we were before. So we can put a little thing, say Google Chrome. Okay, also remember, I had a little bit of flexibility built in here. I put auto margins on the center block, on this, the dark green block. You know, the nested children come along with the parents. So all I had to do was format this, the big green box. Um, this is fixed. This is fixed. I've moved it up a little bit just for this demo because it's going to be easier to see. Um, you'll see in a minute why I did that. But it, eventually it'll go back down here. Okay, so it's parallel with this, or aligned with this, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Okay, so that's where we're at. <clears throat> Let's stick some images in here. Let's start at the top here with our header. I have a heading image. Um, what I would do, and give you a little more space here, is make sure that I have my cursor right where I want my image, in this case in my header, so right between the beginning tag and the ending tag of my header. Then I can go to my insert menu and just say insert image. And go to my images folder within my local, local site folder and say, oh, in this case, it's called heading PNG and say open. And <clears throat> notice it went right to the center because I had set a few options on my header. Um, Let's go to my header right now, in fact, and make a few little changes. So I go to my CSS designer, it's called my pretzel header. I had gone to this type thing and I had set my text alignment to be centered. Here's the default, actually the default is nothing. So you can see it's on the left edge. And what I did is I set it to center and if you don't have a lot of complex things and just one image in there, it'll generally center. I also added a little bit of padding at the top to this box. So if we go over here and just click show sets, you can see that I have 20 pixels of padding right here. Let's just scrub that so you can see it. And that, you know, that's the padding within the box, the top, so the top of the box. So the, the image element is um, buttressed a little bit by, in this case, 20 pixels. And that makes it appear at the center. And you know what else I could do while I'm here? Um, because when I do preview this, you probably notice, let's go ahead and preview it. And now it's gonna be all funny about the previews. Nope, there we go. When I preview it, um, oh, I also did it, I think I already did it, I forgot. Um, notice how my header is um, filling the whole page all the way over, <laughs> no matter how big I make my, um, let's even zoom out. If I zoom out, even you can tell, it's, it's not a pixel-based header. <laughs> what I did for my header is I actually went and I set the width to 100%. So I just clicked on this little drop down and set it to percent. And that was an easy way for that whole top bar to fit any sort of browser. It can be a small browser, a big browser. Okay, so that was um, the header itself, and then the image has been set to text align center. I'm gonna show you other ways to um, center an image and even increase the size of it proportionally to the bounding box, because um, now that you've seen that there's this percentage option, you can start playing with it. You won't break anything. You can always just go back to pixels. We're gonna, I'm gonna force you to use percentages later on when we start making more responsive sites. Um, but that's why you do with that. Okay, let's do something a little more um, um, more image heavy. So we're gonna go, so there's gonna be text within this, this subheader here, um, which also I should, well, I don't, don't wanna get distracted here. It needs more margin to fit exactly where I wanted it to fit. Okay. All right, so this guy here, um, this is our step buttons. So we can go to our step buttons 
right here. It has the word steps in it. I'm going to take out the word steps and we're going to put our images in there. All right, so the word steps comes out of there. And I'm going to show you a different way since there's six images. I have six different steps. You know you have to have at least five ex internal links and five external links. I have six, six links because that's how many, many steps I need to show how to make a sourdough pretzel. Um, one way we can insert images besides going to that insert button and clicking on image and having our cursor in the correct spot down here is just to go into design view. Um, in fact, I'll just go straight and design view and take out the split view for a minute. Um, and just drag those images right in there. And this only works in design view and we'll have to uh, switch right back in a second. Um, so we go to our, our files and I can take, oh, mix is the first one. And don't worry, we'll get that rid of that text in a second. Actually, you know what, let's get rid of this part now. Notice it automatically pushes it over, right? Because Oops, too dry. Somehow it ended up. I ended up now with good Jeff. <laughs> Delete this one. Okay, mix rise. Um, put the cursor back down here. Shape, <clears throat> shape, rise. Huh, that's so interesting. Um, boil. Ooh, boil ended up down here. Oh my god. Let's go back to my live view here for a minute. I'm totally hitting the wrong thing. They're not even going into that box. I hate design view. I see what's happening. They're actually... It, okay. Um, just to warn you, it looked like I was putting... I, you know, normally you wouldn't have that. Let's do this. Let's um, move... I'm going to go back to my CS designer and go to my step buttons and move it back down a little bit um, with my margin. Oh wait, there we go. Okay, wasn't scrubbing like a one or two. I was unfortunately dropping them into this even though I thought I was putting them in there. I should have been paying attention to my HTML like I normally would, but I was trying to give you guys a bigger screen. So let's try that again. Okay. Okay, it's definitely in the red box this time because it was doing something weird, and I'll show you what in a minute. So before, it looked like it was going in there, but watch, when I hit number three, see how the shape one, instead of going across here, it's now going down. Well, it's because a second ago, it thought I was putting in this green bar, which goes across, so they were going across. Now, I'm gonna put all these in and then reorganize them. Now, when it hits the edge here, you can see there's mix and rise on the same one, um, but then shape, which goes number three, let's take boil and put boil down here. Shape is number three because boil actually can't fit here. It goes to the next line. So you can see what's happening. I'll res reshape this window here in a second so you can see it very clearly and then eat. <clears throat> if we go to my CSS designer and I start messing with, this is step buttons, and I step start messing with the width and I make the width longer, the everything starts to jump up to the next level if it'll fit. So this is super important to know. Remember our stacking order? Well, this is just the stacking order with images. And it works slightly different because it'll fit several images on a line instead of stacking them top to bottom. But if there's room, it'll put the next image or the next word, the next whatever, if there's room. So a simple solution here is, you know, I'd probably just make it this this width, and you can see they're already formatted exactly what I, how, how I want them to. I need to put some more space between them, and that's an easy thing. That's going to be the second demo when we talk about um, element selectors. Um, that's what it's going to take here. The best way to do this will be to make an element selector. Um, but for now, um, a really easy way, If let's just say I did want to keep my box that um, 200 pixels or 200, let's do 210 just so it's still there. 210 pixels, how do I separate these guys, mix and rise? Well, that's an easy thing to do. I go back to my split view, um, and here's where I'm gonna take the, the, the top margin and make it negative so it'll go back up there so you guys can, so I can, can see all this a little bit better without me having to do too much scrolling. 
Okay, so you can see all my images in now. There's my nav box. Here's the, the first image. Here's the second image and the third. And you know what? I'm gonna even just make it easier to see. I'm gonna put the cursor in there and hit return to put these all in their own line. Notice when I put them all in their own line, it, nothing really happens. Like it doesn't change the formatting. It's just making it easier for me to read, for you guys to read. So I have different images. Each have their own line. I just need to be really careful. I put the cursor in the right spot so I don't break up any of the brackets. All right, and there's the end of my nav box. I'm gonna put a return there. So everything looks nice and nested. There's a whole box, there's all the images. If I want to break up mix and rise, I literally, all I have to do is type bracket, B, R, for break, and then click back up here because <laughs> it didn't want to take. But you see what, you saw what happened. It Now it put a little break in there. And the, uh, the way to, if you forget to type BR, you can always go to, up to your this insert menu up here and go down to HTML and down to character and do line break. And it'll insert the BR for you if you don't like the type even less than me. <laughs> um, so there's this insert is very similar to the insert menu we've been using over here. You probably notice all the similarities. So if you prefer menus, um, that's totally fine. And in fact, this might even be in here. I never scrolled up. There's character right there and line break. All right, so three different play, three different ways you can do a line break. Sort of here and sort of over here, or just type in br. So you know, even though everything looks fine on our screen, I do know I want these on separate lines. So I'm gonna put breaks here. Although in the end, what I'm going to show you how to do is set these elements to block levels, so they'll take up their own line no matter what. That's done via CSS, but we have not done element selectors yet, so we're gonna save that for the next demo when we also do the body tag and set up our um, cutting board as our background. All right, so all those images are in there. Um, now if I resize this window in my CSS designer and make it wide again, watch. All right, where are my, there we go. <laughs> Being quirky now, this must mean I should be bringing this uh, thing to an end here. I will insert one more image for fun though. Um, so let's take the same thing, they make the width taller or longer again, wider. That's the word I'm looking for. And all the all the images stay on their own line because they put breaks in there. And again, we'll do this in a more fancy way with the block level formatting, um, which is a CSS property when we learn element selectors. All right, because right now we know class selectors and ID selectors. Okay, last thing we're gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and put our center image in here. Um, I put some, I put some um, text in there, I'd like I, just in case I wanted to um, put an image and then some type under it. You know what, we'll keep that, but instead of doing a column type, I'm gonna put the type under it. Um, although I was gonna actually put the type in the footer. So let's say we don't need that nesting anymore, or maybe we wanna keep our yellow bar um, so what I should do, so there was my main, my SD main was my big green box. And then in that, um, where I say I'm going to put some, a really cool illustration, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, I don't know why I call that big type since I'm putting an illustration in there, but, um, I think I must've been doing something with large type just to show you the difference, but it's just called our big type section. And I'm going to give it a bigger width and it dumps the next one right to the bottom, which is what I wanted, wanted to happen. Um, and I'm going to take the height off in a minute and I'll show you why. Um, but for now, we're going to keep it on. And we'll go ahead and I'm going to go back in live view so my page looks correct. <clears throat> See, it's just, it didn't have a ton of real estate there. Um, and take out this text 
and insert an image. Now I wasn't sure which one I'm going to use for my first page, um, but we'll decide right now. So insert, scroll back up, image. Again, make sure I um, make it double. My image was my cursor was blinking right here and right where I want the image to be. So got to make sure you're paying attention to that. And we can just do um, my prep pick and say open. And there's my prep pick. Now you'll see a few things happen here. Let's just go to straight to live view because we're running out of space here. This image um, is way bigger than this green box, or in fact, this lime green box, which is what it's supposed to go into, right? It's, it is much bigger than that. Um, let's go to my split view, just because I just wanted to make sure it ended up in the right spot. It did, in my big type section. So one other thing that um, I couldn't show you about these um, these boxes, like this section in this case, or a header or a footer, is it automatically will resize based on its content. Now, if you don't have any content in there, we always start with the size so we can see the box. But if I take that width off, and I take that height off, that box, that lime green box, automatically fills that space. So the image and its bounding box, in this case, the section, um, big type, are the same. And that is super good to know. And you can see it's even bigger than its parent at this point. Well, um, the parent, now I could definitely take off the width. So the parent was called SD main. Um, so I can start getting rid of some of these, some of these um, widths and heights. Like I'm just turning them off right now to make sure they you know, everything's cool, but I could hit the little trash can thing and make them go away. But, you know, I might want to do some more changes still. Also, we should go back to our step buttons and put the width at something. Let's put it back at 210 pixels. Okay, and then we're going to preview this guy because it's a small screen and it's having a hard time seeing everything with all of our tabs and everything. So... Okay, oh, something weird is going on now. <clears throat> Maybe I shouldn't have taken off the widths and heights just yet. In fact, let's not do that. <laughs> I'm just going to match the width to this because here's what happened. Without knowing the width and height as a definition, this, if you recall, this box was centered, but because it doesn't know the width or height because it's not listed in the CSS, it doesn't know how to center it anymore. So... I had forgotten that little error. And that's why I just turned them off with, um, you know, I just commented them out basically is what's happening in Dreamweaver when you when you hit that icon that I hit. Um, so with our, our, let's see, SD main, I'm gonna put those guys back on and you saw it jump right back to the center because now the parent knows how to center itself because. If you recall, that is the one that had auto margins. I used left and right auto margins to center that box. And now it, 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 it's all cool again. We'll go ahead and preview it. It'll ask us to save everything. Um, save it. All right, cool. I think I also um, need to take off some of the margin or something because it's not quite centered, but it's generally working like it's supposed to. Okay. Also remember, I gotta, I've got to put some top margin on this guy again. I took it off so we could see it a little bit better. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is a specialized thing here. We're going to do this one next and um, come back to the formatting later on. Okay, so <clears throat> Dreamweaver. All right, so this is my for my external links. Um, now here's what I wanted to show you. So my external links, I have my cursor in there, and I go to insert something. So um, let's go back to my files again. I actually go to my insert menu and say insert an image, and we'll go ahead and insert um, 
if it asks you what you want to do with it, we're going to nest it within our, our nav box. So in this case, I didn't wasn't so bright as to put um, the ingredient saying goes first. All right, so I have the word ingredient there. Um, And it's, it's going to look a little weird. Let's go ahead and preview this right away just to make sure we ended up in the right spot. It looks like it's in the right spot, but um, Dreamweaver sometimes now, seen it before it was scrolling, <laughs> now it's not. It's supposed to be in that box that it is. It sort of freaked me out when it jumped out of that box for a minute, but um, sometimes the updating window has a little bit, it's a little bit of a lag in Dreamweaver, just FYI, be patient. Be patient with it. Um, now, <laughs> I have a cool background for this. It's the cut paper. It's supposed to look like you wrote the ingredients down on a scrap piece of paper or something, just because I tend to do that a lot. Um, so how do we put that background in there? Okay, well, this, this is a first example of if, if I was to do like an inline image, again, I wouldn't be able, they would just stack up on top of each other. In fact, we'll go ahead and do that. We'll just go to our insert and we'll say image and it's called paper background and say open. You know, it goes under it just like you expect. So that's not helpful. I need the ingredients to be written on top of it. And then we can also take off this horrible, ugly background of red. Those are all gonna go, right? This whole thing, we're gonna see the cutting board through all this stuff once it's done. Um, okay, so let's, let's not do that. Let's go back to our code here and um, either just I can do undo or just delete that. I'm going to do command Z and just take it out for a minute. Okay, so how do I get that background in there so it looks like a background, so it's behind my ingredient list? Well, <clears throat> for that, I don't even need to do HTML, so I'm actually going to just put this on live view. All right, so what I need to do is this is called my X link buttons. It's a nav um, navigation uh, box. And... As for external link buttons, is why I titled it that way. So there is the stuff I have that goes with it, all the properties I have set. Remember, I have this little show set button check to see exactly what those things are. Well, I'm going to uncheck that for a minute because we need to, to see the ones we still need to set because one of them I need to set. If I go over to background, you know, I did a background color, but there's just also this background image thing. And I can click on the little folder. And it brings up my browser and I can bring my cutting board back. Oh, it's not my cutting board, it's my paper. My paper graph brown and say open. And it plops it in there. Now, ingredients you can see is overlapping that a little bit, but you know, once I add a little bit of, of padding, and, and actually let's do this, let's do an easy fix for this for now until we go ahead and I'm gonna do text align on this side and then we'll add a little bit of padding to this box as well. So we'll come up to padding and we'll put some padding on the top. I'm gonna to uncheck this guy and put some padding up here and it'll move down. And also we can tell, um, did I spell ingredients right? That's a weird looking eye. Um, let's put 50 pixels just because that's an easy number for me to remember. All right, cool beans. So see how that works? So we have the image in as a background image and I'm going to do a few other things here with external this external link buttons box. I'm going to also make it super tall for a minute um, and super wide because I want to show you the defaults. So the defaults for a background image, <coughs> just go straight to here so we can see that stuff. Um, the defaults for a background, so this is background icon. The default for the background image is that it automatically tiles. You probably, you know, way back in the day, there used to be a lot of tiling backgrounds. Um, designers have gotten a lot cleaner and more professional looking for the web, so um, that tends to have gone away, but it's still the default. So I need to go and say, has the background repeat? I just click on no repeat. And that would have only have a single one. I could also have it just repeat side to side, or I could have it repeat up to down um, if I wanted to. So now it would only, if I scroll down, I should see them. Oh, it won't scroll because it's fixed. Good, Jeff. It would, it would tile up and down with that, but I don't want it to tile at all. All right, so 
Just keep that in mind. You can also um, do background position and even scale it up. But you can click on this and say, oh, you know what? I want that background to be right. Which is really handy because perhaps I do want some other text over here that's not supposed to go with ingredients. Maybe I wanted to type some text in here um, or nest another div box in here that's floated to the left and then I have some information there. Um, I mean, you never know. So you can decide to, um, if you click on the percentage, you can say it to be top or bottom or whatever. The default would be the top, so that doesn't really change anything, but the right is not the default, left is default. So that did. I can change the size of it even. I wouldn't want to make it too much bigger than the original, but I can change the size. I can change the um, the this, this background attachment thing. Um, if I had a scrolling web box, uh, like a scrolling web page, I could set it to fix so this background doesn't scroll. Once we do our body background with this cutting board, we're gonna set it to fix so the cutting board always stays right there in the center and everything scrolls across the cutting board instead of this cutting board scrolling away when we scroll down the page. Um, but we don't need to worry about that with just this. Um, let's see, so we show background, background, let's see. So all that's super, super handy. That's a lot of control we have with CSS properties. All right, now I can make my box back to, take my box back to its normal size. Um, I can't remember what that was exactly, so I'm just gonna scrub through. So when I take that background color off, just so you can see how much nicer this will look, you know, I'll, it'll look like a nice clean sheet of paper with the cutting board behind it. Okay, so I think that's everything we need to know about images. We've seen how to insert an image um, in Design View, insert an image in live view, always make sure you're paying attention where your cursor is. Um, and finally, we set this background in via CSS. So if we need an image in front of an image, put the background in via CSS. All right, so it was just right under this. If you want to go right to those things, go right to this fourth icon. That's the background icon. It has all the stuff for backgrounds. All right, color and image. Okay, I think that is all. Um, the more important things that come with formatting these images is the next demonstration, which is all about the element selector, um, which is super powerful um, in CSS. So, till then, um, have fun inserting your images.